Good morning, good morning, and welcome to day number seven of our seven day fast and consecration. We have had six power packed days, and I'm really hoping and praying that you have gained a new and deeper appreciation for the spiritual discipline of fasting. In reality, these are things that God gives us, prayer, fasting, meditating on the word of God, that God gives us to help to fortify us as believers, to help to mature us in our spiritual connection with God. And these are the weapons and the tools that God literally gives to shape us in the image of Christ. We've had six power packed days and I'm praying that you have seen results in your life. And for some of us, we're going to have to continue even on after this day. We're going to have to continue in this time of fasting. And so what I wanted to do today, I had a plan, everything. I had it all planned out what I wanted to do. And today we were going to talk about go for it. And right. And so we're going to kind of combine these two things together. Day number seven. Uh, number one, first thing I want you to do is I want you to go for it. And what that means is I want you to develop uh, a portion of your own fasting focus for today. In addition to the one I'm going to give you, I want you to develop that on your own because for some of us, we're going to have to move from this day and we're going to have to carry this fast for maybe 21 days or so. Um, it may be 14 days, whatever the Lord puts on you individually. Some of us will have to continue after the day. Some of us are done with this round, but some of us will continue. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take this time and I want you to prepare your focus for today. All right. Now, this is too far. I'm working this together because the Lord woke me up this morning, early this morning, and he put something in my spirit that I have to share with you. I have to share it with you. Uh, but this is just uh, for those uh, who need this to move forward. Um, and so what I want you to do is whatever it is in your life, whatever area in your life, you specifically need victory. I want you to find a scripture in the word of God that supports what you're asking God to do in your life. If you don't know where to find it in the Bible, Google search it. Anything you can look up scriptures on health, scriptures on identity, scriptures on deliverance, whatever it is, find that scripture that speaks to what you're asking God to do, whatever that place of victory is in your life. You may need answers to some questions. You may, you may be trying to move on and you're at a crossroad in your life and you need God to point you in the right direction. Look at those scriptures that talk about God leading us and guiding us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by him. Meditate those words. Pull that word out. That's going to be your, your scripture uh, to meditate. And you're going to use that word, study that out, to let God reveal and unveil the truth of that word for your life. And then throughout the day, as you're strategically studying and meditating that scripture, be prayerful specifically about that thing that you're asking God to do, you're asking God to remove, or that thing you're asking God for, right? And that's going to help to shape your fasting focus for the day. Now, you're going to take that same model and you're going to move forward with it. If you're going to continue on from after this day, you're going to do the same thing every single day. And it may be that after this time, you may have to work on that same thing, that same focus for several days. However it is, it may be the salvation of people in your family, whatever it may be. Take that scripture, find that verse that supports what it is you're trying to do. Study it out strategically to find out what is in this. What God, what do you want me to get from this? And find something in that, find something in, the, in those verses and meditate those things. What that means is just continue to think through them. Continue to think over and ask the question, God, what does this mean for me? How should this be applied to my life? How, can, how does victory come to me from what the word says? Continue to meditate that out. Pray through that and, in that, and during that time, you will see how God will begin to unveil and open things up to you concerning that word. So continue that model from this day forward, all right? Now, that's what I wanted to talk about, so I had to put that in there for those who need that to move forward. But this morning, the Lord woke me from my sleep, and I heard, as clear as day, a new atmosphere. A new atmosphere. Here's what, I, here's what I need you to know. Here's, here's what the Lord said to me. That we need to seek God for a new atmosphere. Because the atmospheres that many of us currently live in, the airspace of our minds, our homes, uh, of our jobs, of our relationships, is conducive for certain things to grow and remain that we're asking God to take away from us. And I, let, let, me, let me say it this way. If I wanted to grow bananas or any tropical fruit, 
I cannot take that to a cold climate and try to grow that tropical fruit in a cold climate because the soil is not conducive. The air temperature is not conducive. The minerals in the soil and all those various things, they're not conducive to grow that tropical fruit in a cold climate area. The atmosphere is not conducive for that thing to grow, right? Even when you consider the, the, the example of the, of the eagle, then there's sometimes when the eagle will attack something, he will kill it right there on the ground. But there are other things that the eagle won't kill on the ground. But what it will do is it will grab it and it will continue to soar higher and higher into different altitudes until it gets to a level that whatever it is that they're holding, whatever their prey is, cannot breathe. It gets to a, a level and altitude where it can't breathe, where its prey cannot breathe. And then it suffocates its prey by flying to an altitude that it can't handle. And so the eagle itself doesn't have to kill it. The atmosphere does. And here's what I heard God say. That if you can shift and change your atmosphere, certain things that you're praying and asking God to remove from your life will die automatically. Some of the things that you're wanting God to do in your life, God, your atmosphere is not conducive to support what you're asking God to do. You're essentially asking God to produce tropical weather fruit in a cold weather climate. God says there's some relationships that you want to be over. There are some, some, some things that you're wanting to be added. He says there are some mindsets and some lifestyle choices that you have made. You have a lifestyle maybe that you want to be free from. But God says your atmosphere is not conducive for freedom. So here's what that means. That whatever it is, we're going to pray the prayer of deliverance. But God says that once you have been delivered, you have to close those doors. You have to close those doors. Whatever it is that allows that thing to connect to your life, you have to close the doors that let it in. Right? Because the Bible says that when a spirit comes, it goes out from a place, but it comes and returns and it finds that place clean, swept, and empty, but uninhabited. That it goes back to hell and gets seven spirits more wicked than himself, comes back and re-inhabit that place, and the state of the latter is worse than the former. Here's what that means. That once you have been delivered from something, but you don't go the next step of being filled with the Spirit of God or, or giving yourself holy, holy and holistically to God, that very thing that you were freed from is going to come back around and attempt to re-inhabit that place. It's going to try to reconnect with you. But if, you, but if, you're, not, if you're not full of, what you, of the Spirit of God and God is not on God on your heart, if, they're not at, if the right atmosphere is not in your temple, that thing can come back to you and now you just think it's just it's just harmless. Oh, I'm just gonna go out with my friends. I'm oh, I'm just gonna return the phone call. Oh yeah, you can go ahead and come up. We not we just friends now. And then when you come back and you get reconnected, now the feelings are deeper. The 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 trap is stronger, the pool is stronger, and it's more difficult now to be free than it was in the beginning. We're talking about people who have put down some drugs and some alcohol, who have disconnected themselves from a person and God delivered you. But after the deliverance, there was no follow through. So that thing came back and found the house clean, swept and empty and went back and got seven spirits more wicked and stronger than itself, came back and re-inhabited the place. And now you're in a worse state now than you were in the beginning. And I hear God say, there has to be a new atmosphere. God says, if you want to hear from me, change the atmosphere. There's too much clutter. There's too much noise. There are too many people in your ear telling you what to do and how to do it. And here you are trying to conform yourself to what everybody wants and what everybody thinks. And God can't get a word in. He said, I need your atmosphere changed. You're in a situation. I got to say this again. You're in a lifestyle that you want to be free from. But God says the atmosphere that you have is not conducive for that. There are some ties that will have to be severed. There are some connections that will have to be made. There's some hard words that you're going to have to listen to and you need someone to help to hold you accountable that you will listen to change the atmosphere. This morning at the Main Street Church of God in Christ, we're returning to the sanctuary and I've already gotten in contact with the with the I team, which is my intercessory prayer team. And they're praying specifically for several things that I've given them on the list. And all of these things lend 
to setting an atmosphere in the sanctuary and even in the cyber sanctuary that people that have been connected to things that are holding them that won't release them that the atmosphere itself is going to help to do the work there are going to be some things that are going to be plucked up out of your life when you change the atmosphere there are going to be some things that are going to be planted in your life that will thrive in the right climate in your life because you're going to change the atmosphere and so today Pray to God. God, change the atmosphere of my mind. Change the atmosphere of my home. Change the atmosphere of my job. Everywhere that I am, God, change the ambiance and the atmosphere around me. And here's what God is going to do. There are certain things that God is going to change himself. But there are other things that God is going to act, ask you to evict. He's going to ask you to evict it. He's going to ask you to cut it. He's going to ask you to remove it. And that's your down payment on your own deliverance. Follow the leading of God. Chase hard after God. And when God tells you what to do, you have to follow it. Because God is going to shift and change your atmosphere. And many of the things that you're asking God to do in your life, many of the things you're asking God to remove or add to your life, the atmosphere of your life is going to help to change and to maintain that for you. And my prayer today, is that you have the strength to follow the instructions, the clarity to hear God clearly, and to develop a new hope in Christ to know that in him all things are possible. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for your time, for this time in your presence. I thank you for this seven, day, seven days of consecration. Lord, and I pray for those that after this seven days that will continue in this in this this process in this pattern and i thank you for what you're going to do in their lives i thank you for giving them the clarity to hear you to know how to proceed from here god we don't just want to end this time of fasting and consecration for some of us and then just to fall off and just go back to the way things were we can't go back to the way things used to be and i pray right now god in the name of jesus that you would give clarity on how to proceed from here I pray, God, even those who are going to be going for it today and creating their own fasting focus today, I pray, God, that you would give them that one thing that you want them to focus on today to get them in the habit and the pattern of hearing you, hearing your voice for the things that you want them to meditate and fast for and from. I pray, God, that you would do that, that your name would get the glory. But ultimately, God, I ask you, God, that you would change our collective and personal atmospheres. God, we have some stuff in our lives that we're, we're fighting with, some things in our lives that are holding us down, some things in our lives that are frustrating us, some things in our lives that are constantly poking at us and, and, and prodding us, pushing us to do the things that are not pleasing in your sight, those things that are difficult for us to disconnect from, and it makes it difficult for us to make the decisions that you're pleased with. Some of us are struggling to make decisions some of us are struggling to love someone that, that, is, that has wronged us over and over again. But deep down in our hearts, we're hearing you say, release them in forgiveness. Forgive them and release them. But we're struggling with it. There's some of us, God, who are struggling to take that next step, to, take, to go to the next level in our lives. Some of us are struggling with the purpose and the call that you have for us, God, because we're, we're going vacillating over accepting it because we don't want the consequences that come with our yes, Lord. But I'm praying now, God, in the name of Jesus, that everybody under the sound of my voice, I pray right now that you would shift atmospheres, shift the atmosphere, God, and make atmospheres conducive in our lives to produce those things that you want in our lives and to eradicate those things that you don't. Change our atmospheres today so that we don't have to work so hard to pluck up things that shouldn't be there. Change the atmospheres so that those things can't grow and they can't survive. I pray, God, that you do this, that your name will get the glory. And I pray that even today, that as we go into houses of worship, whether it be in person or virtual, I pray, God, that the atmosphere will be so charged and so powerful that we would all leave different and better than the way we came. I give your name glory and I thank you for it now. And it is so and not otherwise. Listen, I love you and I thank God for you. And I pray today that you will find a house of worship to connect to. Find somewhere to worship today. Whether it be virtually or in person, find somewhere to worship today. And God is literally going to create a new atmosphere in your life 
that's going to shift the entire trajectory of your life. May God bless you and keep you.